Thank you for joining us here this week on windserve2.com. This week will be the final uh, tutorial involving RDS and essentially what we're going to do is um, kind of the natural continuation of what we were talking about last week. If you remember last week we you know created an MSI a Windows installer package from our remote desktop services here and then we came over to our workstation and we manually installed them on the workstation but really if the whole purpose is to alleviate going to individual workstations and installing software packages we want to create um, and have the ability to never go to the workstation and install anything at all um, we never want to touch the workstation so what we're going to do is we are going to use a feature within group policy to actually deploy these MSI files to uh, the workstation itself and that way and we'll actually also deploy the certificate so we will never have to go through and touch any of our workstations we can host all of our remote applications on one centralized server for central management and we won't have to go to the servers to install those MSI files that we've exported so this is a really great option when you have a very large deployment and a very large rollout that you would have to do across an environment if you had the horsepower in your servers to do this so in order to do this there's something that you um, need to know the reason why it took me actually a little bit longer to put out this video is because I didn't check something very very simple when um, setting up my first round of doing this video I have this install file share and you can see this is where my MSI file is located so what you're gonna need to do is you're going to need to check your properties and oh I can't do it from here let me actually go to the server itself you're going to need to check the properties of this server share because if the share does not have um, everyone as a reader when Active Directory attempts to install this MSI file it will actually fail and the reason is is how we're going to be doing this and if you push out a user or application even to a particular user the um, cert the workstation when it's booting up and it attempts to reach out to the file share it won't have any particular credentials that it can use to authenticate to this file share and therefore it won't have access to the MSI file and it won't be able to install so the install will simply fail you won't get your application installed on the workstation so it's really important that you either put the computer group in here I think that would probably work if you don't want to use everyone as a reader or you can use everyone with the read attribute for your file share so I just wanted to let you know that now what we're gonna do um, so if you remember how we exported these MSI files we just simply right clicked on the application we were sharing and did create Windows installer package so what we're going to do now is we're going to come over to our domain controller and we're going to open up group policy and here you can see we have an RDS tutorial group policy object so we're going to go to our handy dandy accounting organizational unit and we're going to link an existing GPO and we'll select our RDS tutorial group policy object so what we're going to do is we are going to edit this group policy object and there's two things that we're going to be doing first we are going to actually push down the certificate to our clients um, Internet Explorer so if you remember last week we manually came here and installed um, a certificate to enable that single sign-on and if you remember that certificate was installed under trusted publishers and we don't have that anymore we deleted it for the purposes of this tutorial so we just wanted to show you that so we're gonna push that down through group policy and then as you can see we no longer have our Foxit application installed so we can read PDF documents so we're gonna fix that we're gonna, we're gonna push both of these things out through group policy again group, group policy is very very powerful 
So what we're going to do is we're going to come under Windows Settings here. And we're going to push out this uh, certificate first. So we're going to go down here and we are going to go under Public Key Policies. So it's Computer Configuration, Policies, Windows Settings, Security Settings, and Public Key Policies. Now under these Public Key Policies you will see trusted publishers just like we had in our Internet Explorer. So we're going to right click and select import and here we are going to select that certificate that we want to um, import. And let's just make sure we have this certificate here. Let's see where do we put that. So we had in a different share. It's okay we're going to do test cert one here and we're going to place the certificate in a certificate store and we're going to finish. And so it tells us that our imported certificate was successful. So this certificate is going to contain the public key, which allows us to authenticate to our RDS server. Um, something to, to be mindful of as you get into security, certificates contain the public key. So we can use that to get access to our RDS server. So that's the first part, very simple. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to come up here and go to software settings right under the policies. Now, if you see, we have this software installation. Oh, and I still have um, my old Foxit application there, and we'll just delete it. So, and that's how you delete it. <laughs> so, we're going to go right click, new package. So what we're going to do is we are going to make sure that we are going to this install file share which has the Foxit uh, or which has the everybody group as a reader. Remember if you don't have the everybody group as a reader the install will most likely fail. So we're going to select this Foxit MSI package here. We're going to select open and let's just go under advanced so we can see a couple of the different options here. <clears throat> so we can see the version here deployment options. Now if we want, as, as you just saw when I deleted that, it gave me the option to uninstall the package when I deleted it. And what this is, is this is this option here. Uninstall this application when it falls out of the scope of management. <clears throat> so if we were to delete this group policy object, it would then go through and uninstall the application from all the systems that this group policy object caused the program to initially be installed on. It's kind of a lot, but I think you'll understand it. If you wanted to upgrade a package, let's say, you could do that here. Any sort of categories and modifications you could make. And then lastly, just the various security settings. You can pretty much leave these the defaults. So as you can see here, we have a software installation package. And one thing, you have to go by network share. So if this um, software package was to be on the local C drive, if you were to point to like C colon backslash install files foxit.msi, it would fail because your workstations would be looking at C colon backslash install files foxit.msi. And of course that's not where it was located, so it would fail to install. So we have this all set up. And just a word of note, it's not just the MSI files from RDS that you can install this way. You can actually install most any Windows installer package or any Windows MSI file through group policy in the same exact way. So if you wanted to install some sort of other application, you could use this same exact process to push out pieces of software throughout your environment. Again, group policy is very, very powerful and it's very, very strong. Uh, Microsoft has done a phenomenal job at addressing business needs um, in its architecture. So we're going to close this out here. And this is close out here. We're going to go to our command line. And we are going to force an update of group policy. So GP update and force. Close this out here. And I can tell you we're going to need to reboot when you force the group policy update on the client. 
So yes. So GP update. And we're going to force it here as well. So as you can see, it's going to force us to restart in order for this to take effect. So let's go ahead and reboot. And I'll bring you back as soon as this is finished rebooting. Okay, and we're back at our logon prompt here. And now what we should have when we log on, we should have our Foxit reader installed. So let's see what happens here. And you can see right on the desktop we have our Foxit reader installed and just like last time it is automatically gone through and made that file association with our PDF document and like last time it is placed in remote programs so let's take a look at this we should have to log in one time here so yep we do have to do that And because of that certificate that we pushed out, we should only have to do that once. So yep, we were successful in installing our Foxit Reader. Let's see if that file association worked, if we can open this SANS uh, document. Yep, the good old SANS reading room. Pass the hash attacks. And let's go see if that certificate was installed in Internet Explorer under our Internet Options content certificates and it should be in this trusted publishers so let's take a look at trusted publishers and here we go we have our certificate right here so while we do have now a centralized infrastructure with our RDS server um, we also have the ability to push out these MSI files and the certificates across our environment using the power of group policy Remember, you do have to have the everybody uh, as a uh, as a share option with the reader permission in your share and in the NTFS portion as well. And you also um, will have to have that uh, file pointing to or the MSI package in your group policy pointing to a network share. So and then also remember that you can use this method that we have just d demonstrated to install any MSI file through group policy. So this is really powerful and it gives you the option to not only remotely deploy applications, which a lot of companies are looking for, but also to centrally store and manage your locations. Immensely, immensely powerful feature that Microsoft has given us here. So I hope you've learned a lot from this video tutorial. This is a pretty long series. We had three different segments. Thank you for all of those who have been uh, joining us on our YouTube channel and visiting the website. And thank you for all of you who are subscribing to my channel. Please do check out some of our sponsors. They help keep the channel going. And always stop by the website and post some suggestions through our um, comments form about what types of videos you would like to see. Um, I'm slowly but surely um, making my way to brave a complete Microsoft Exchange tutorial. It will be pretty expansive so it's taking me a while to develop the whole tutorial to show you all. And also I have some clustering um, tutorials that I would like to share with you. I did get a small um, NAS unit which would allow me to do iSCSI so I could demonstrate some clustering options for you as well. So please um, stay tuned, check us out on our website, and thanks again for stopping by this week on windservetoots.com.